Hi everyone. Uh, I'll be starting a new series of lectures on analog integrated circuit design. So this lecture, uh, I'll give an outline of what I'll be covering in that course. Okay, so first I'll begin with MOS and BJD device physics. In fact, this will be a very, very brief uh, coverage of MOS and device physics, MOS and BJD device physics. Uh, if, 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 if I have time, probably I'll, I'll float a separate course on, uh, and I'll probably post a separate set of videos on a proper course on uh, physics of semiconductor devices. Okay, so here uh, we don't need the, to understand the entire physics of the semiconductor devices. We'll just need to understand the IV characteristics, the current versus voltage characteristics for both the BJD and MOSFET uh, in different regions of operations. Okay. And I'll be using these equations to give you an intuitive understanding of, you know, what are the fundamental limits of gain and all that. So I, again, as I said, it's a very, very small, probably two, three lectures on, I mean, not even two, probably one or two lectures on the uh, IV characteristics of MOS and BJT devices. Then uh, we'll come into the main part of the course, main part of the course. Uh, which is about single stage amplifier design and uh, so in this we will again uh, see when, when i started designing amplifiers uh, so one of the first questions i had was how do you start where do you start the amplifier design so in this series of lectures we will try to answer that question okay and uh, if you already have a basic if you have taken a basic course on analog ic's or even a basic course on circuits you will benefit a lot more. You can appreciate a lot more of the content that I'm going to present in this uh, in, the, in this series of lectures. Okay, so we'll discuss about how do we go about designing single stage amplifiers for a certain gain and biasing, and how do we bias them, bias those uh, amplifiers. So I'll try to give an extensive coverage of uh, single stage amplifiers and also. Uh, and I'll give intuitive ways of analyzing uh, uh, and analyzing MOS based circuits. And I'll try and not use KCLs and KVLs uh, as much as I can. Only when it's absolutely necessary, we'll resort to KCLs and KVLs. But we'll try to analyze circuits, guess the output, output voltages, okay, the expressions for gain by just intuitions. Then uh, naturally we'll move on to the multi-stage amplifiers. So I'll be again, uh, as I said, we, I'll try to give an intuitive analysis of what's already, we, what, what is, I mean, the circuits that we already are aware of, okay, that we are already aware of, okay. So like cascodes and we'll try to relook at it in a different way, okay. So uh, that's about multi-stage amplifiers. So mainly here when I'm saying multi-stage amplifiers, I'm mainly talking about the low frequency analysis so we are only trying to design multi-stages to get higher gains, okay? So how do we cascade them? What are the best possible ways of cascading them? And all that uh, we'll talk about in this part of the lectures. Then I'll move on to differential pairs. Uh, this is one of the more popular applications of amplification, analog amplifiers. So we'll see how to characterize differential pairs, why differential, and the different parameters used to characterize uh, differential pairs. And uh, then I'll move on to the frequency response of circuits. So what is the maximum speed limit or uh, what is the maximum frequency up till which the amplifiers will be able to provide you faithful amplification. And uh, we'll also look at some very interesting results, for example, in cascode amplifiers. So I'll try to give a very probably uh, results you would not have thought of uh, before and probably in any textbook would discuss, you know, uh, we'll talk extensively about that uh, when, when we come to the frequency response of uh, amplifiers. I will cover extensively both single and differential, single ended and differential circuits. Okay, and we will again use intuitions to find the poles and zeros of any given complex circuit. So there are different ways. In fact, uh, we have already discussed about intuitive ways of finding poles and zeros for first order RC circuits. Okay, and even to some extent second order RC circuits, uh, RC circuits and even LC circuits. Okay, so here uh, we'll have slightly more complicated conditions when we go to analysis of MOS amplifiers. Uh, we will have a slightly because the circuit becomes a little bit more complicated, but again, we will try to analyze circuits which can be analyzed using intuitions. Okay, 
So again, uh, in, in, in this age of simulation softwares, when something is too complicated, you don't try to analyze it, but rather try to have intuitions for it and rely on simulation softwares, uh, you know, to validate your intuitions. Okay. And then we'll discuss about feedback. So here I've shown the figure using OPAMS, but we'll not be discussing OPAMS right now, or at least at this point in the lecture series. And uh, mainly I'll talk about feedback in simple MOS based circuits. Okay. So what is the idea of feedback? You know, we'll talk extensively about feedback, what it does to the input and output impedances and all that. Okay. How did the idea of feedback evolve and everything we'll be discussing in this part of the uh, lecture series. Okay, so then I'll talk about linearity. So for example, I'll take one classic example. Say we have a presenter presenting in an auditorium. So he has a wired mic with him. And so a mic is a microphone which converts speed signals. Here I've shown it here, converts it into an electrical signal. That signal is normally very weak. You know, the transducer converts it to an electrical signal that's very weak. And eventually the loudspeaker I mean, depends on the power. It can be a very high power loudspeakers or it can be a two to three watt loudspeakers. Okay. So eventually you'll have to drive a loudspeaker uh, spread across the room, okay, across the auditorium. So the signal has to undergo amplification from small values, finally, to be able to drive a power amplifier where it has to deliver a lot of power to the load. Okay. So first you have to amplify the signal to significantly large levels. And in the process of amplification, most amplifiers, which will be built using nonlinear devices, so therefore they'll exhibit nonlinear characteristics. Input and output characteristics will be nonlinearly related. You know, the output y will be a nonlinear function of the input. When this happens, when you feed a frequency f0 to an amplifier, for a linear system, for a linear time invariant system, the output should also contain the same frequency. But because of this non-linearities, you will start getting different frequencies, F0, 2, F0, 3, F0, and so on. Okay. So to characterize that, we use the term called harmonic distortion or THD, total harmonic distortion. Okay. So we'll, we'll discuss about all those parameters extensively in this part of the course, mainly how to design an amplifier to have better linearity. So what are the trade-offs? How do we, yeah, what, what, what should we do to design highly linear amplifiers? And how do we, what are the parameters you use to characterize a linear amplifier? Okay, so that we'll be discussing in this part of the lecture series. And then we will talk about noise. So any analog circuit, you cannot have a circuit which is free of noise. So how do we design circuits? I mean, what parameter in an amplifier determines the overall noise of the circuit? Okay, so we'll, uh, how do we actually design an analog circuit keeping noise in mind? So that we will discuss in this part of this, uh, in, in, in this part of the course, we'll discuss about that. And with this, we are more or less equipped with basic understanding of analog circuits. So now I'll take some two, I mean, when, I, when we talk of course of analog circuits, we should also discuss about uh, voltage and current references. So we normally assume draw a current source or a voltage source, okay? But how do, in an integrated circuit, how does these, uh, how, how does one realize the current source or a voltage source practically in a circuit? So it can be, for example, if you have a chip, a current source can be an input to the chip itself, or sometimes you may have to locally derive it inside the chip from a available voltage, okay? So how do we derive that? So that circuits we'll be discussing it in this part of the uh, course. Okay. And then we will come to CMOS op-amp design. So this will be like putting all the knowledge that we have so far gained in a one, in one place, you know. So whether it's, whether it's about the single stage amplifier, differential pairs, frequency response, all that we'll be putting it in one place. Okay. And uh, that will be about design of CMOS op-amps. Again, uh, if you have started taking any basic codes, you'd know what an op-amp is. An op-amp is a very high gain amplifier. Using that, we could do a lot of mathematical operations like addition, subtractions, integration, differentiation, and so on. So how do we design? So, I mean, uh, if you have mathematically an amplifier, which is a device like this, which would take two inputs and you would generate an output voltage, 
which will be an amplified version of the V plus minus V minus. The voltages are the positive in the negative terminals, where if the A is, the gain has to be very, very high. Okay. So, but then when you build circuits, uh, those circuits are, will have a finite bandwidth limitations, meaning they can only give you that gain for a certain frequency ranges. So, how do we expand that? And, and what are the challenges in designing those amplifiers? Is what we'll be discussing uh, in this part of the course. Again, we'll go extensively into different possible op amp architectures, okay, for different applications. Okay, uh, I'll not be going into the systems part of this course. I mean, I'll not, when I say systems, I'll not talk, for example, I'll talk about an application of switch capacitor op amp. Okay, application of op-amp in a switched capacitor circuit. But we'll not be talking about switched capacitor circuits itself. You know, for that probably I'll offer a separate course on it. When, when I say separate course, I'll talk about all analog systems in a separate course. Okay, and finally, uh, in this course, we'll talk about power amplifiers. So as I discussed in one classic example, wherein you had a microphone signal amplifying it until finally, the signal is fed to a loudspeaker where you need to you'll have to deliver maximum amounts of huge amounts of power you know normally those are for, for example when you design low frequency amplifiers you may not be delivering those amounts of power okay I mean, when i say uh, what i'm referring here is that the low frequency small signal amplifiers that we talk about okay they don't have to deliver so much amounts of power okay the finally, the final stage is when it is actually encountering a resistive load, like for example, a loudspeaker. Okay, it has to now drive a very large or, or, or a very low resistance or a, a circuit with, which demands huge power. So that stage of the amplifier finally, which is going to drive that is what we call as a power amplifier. Okay, and uh, power amplifiers, you, you can also have RF power amplifiers. Uh, when, for example, your cellular phone antennas uh, emit around few watts, power in the range of watts. So there again, we need amplifiers driving an antenna, okay? And similarly, what I've shown here is a loudspeaker, which is for low frequency circuits, an audio amplifier, which is nothing but a speaker. Again, for simple speakers, we can have, as I said, powers in the range of two to five watts and so on. For uh, It can be much higher than that as well for uh, louder and louder speakers, okay? And the amplifier which are driving this are what we call as power amplifiers, okay? So we'll see what are the performance metrics and how do we design such amplifiers in BJT and CMOS, in both in BJT and uh, CMOS. So this is the outline of uh, the course. Again, uh, there's not a strict outline. I might uh, change the order of the topic sometimes or, you know, add, add a new topic as, in, as I feel as we start, uh, you know, as I start making a set of videos on it. Okay. So uh, that's it about the outline. So normally, uh, when I start my series, uh, courses, uh, I have a habit of actually presenting the history, what has been covered so far. So the next part, of, next set of lectures will be about the history of circuit design. So before we come to circuits, I'll start from basic electricity and history of atom, quantum mechanics, and then to uh, the transistors and so on. Okay. So the next few lectures will be more of the history part of uh, the history of analog circuits. And after that, we'll I'll start with this the, the outline. I mean, the material that I've discussed in this uh, in, in in this lecture right now.